We know that the environment has profound effects on animal development and the traits that we develop as we grow into adulthood. Uh, one of the ways to understand this is not that the environment is generically good or generically bad, it's that the environment is providing information to the developing organism uh, about what kind of world it's going to encounter and that it's an opportunity for animals to tune their traits to that predicted environment. So one problem with this uh, in studying this is that development takes a long time. So in humans we're talking about years or decades and even in mice we're talking about months or more. We study a small roundworm called Cinerobditis elegans that develops in just three days. So we have the opportunity to look at the early life environment, which in the case of this worm is just a few hours, and then three days later how this translated into adult traits. The other thing about C. elegans is that they're all genetically identical within a given strain. So when we have a population of animals, we know that they're anatomically identical, they're genetically identical, and so any changes we see between groups of adults are because of environmental influences on their development. So what we wanted to do was test the effects of starvation stress on development and how this would affect the animal's behavior in the context of looking for food in adulthood. And we were able to make predictions about this because these are very well studied behaviors. These are behaviors where there are theoretical models that make uh, fairly precise predictions about how information about food availability should affect foraging behavior. When C. elegans experience harsh environmental conditions like starvation in the L1 larval stage, they enter a developmental diapause state called dower. Uh, this is a developmental arrest where they essentially stop aging and stop growing. Uh, and when conditions improve and they have access to food, they exit from the dower stage and continue their normal life cycle again. This is very useful in the wild where food is not always available and populations go through boom and bust cycles uh, according to how much food is available. Most C. elegans sampled from the wild have been found in this dower stage. We asked whether animals remember this starvation in early life and if post-dower animals change their foraging or food search behavior in response to this experience. We based our study on two theoretical models from ecology. The first is the adaptive developmental plasticity hypothesis which states that animals use environmental conditions from early development to predict the future environmental conditions they'll encounter as adults. And then they tune their behavioral strategies and other traits to that predicted environment. So we hypothesize that the experience of early life starvation uh, should predict a resource poor environment uh, over the course of an animal's life. And so post hours should tune their behavior towards such an environment. The other model is Charnov's Marginal Value Theorem, which allows us to predict how much a given animal should explore its environment based on its beliefs about the amount, quality, and distribution of food in its environment. So we examined foraging behavior in adult C. elegans, and we compared post-hour animals, those that had gone through this starvation-induced developmental arrest, with animals that had been provided with abundant food their entire lives. Previous studies had described innate differences in baseline foraging behavior in different wild strains of C. elegans, and the domesticated or lab-adapted N2 strain was the least exploratory. Other wild isolates will leave a patch of bacteria more often, and the most exploratory strain that was described was the Hawaiian CB4856 strain. So when we did our experiments, we compared the N2, the domesticated strain, with other wild isolates, including the Hawaiian wild isolate. And our results showed that post hour Hawaiians leave the lawn less, and when they do leave the lawn, they explore less area than the domesticated N2 strain. So it seems that wild strains like the Hawaiian strain have this sort of long term plasticity in foraging behavior in response to going through dower, whereas it was absent in the domesticated N2 strain. And we wondered if this was an effect of domestication associated genetic changes in the N2 strain. So here you can see two single animals, the control animal and the post tower animal, exploring a patch of food which is at the center of the plate. You can see the post tower animals stay mostly on this patch of food, whereas the control animals are going to explore more area through this one hour time period. So this control animal has gone off the lawn and it's exploring, whereas this post tower animal stays mostly on the lawn. It reverses a lot at the lawn borders, and when it does leave the lawn, it doesn't explore as much area as the post hour animals. C. elegans also exhibit stereotyped food search patterns when there is no food available. So for the first approximately 10 minutes, they look around for food in a limited local area, and this is done by having high number of reversals and turns. 
which restrict their search area. This is called the local search phase. And if they don't find food in the vicinity after this local search phase, they switch to a dispersal mode or the global search phase, where they suppress their turns and reversals and mostly go on forward runs. We video tracked animals for 20 minutes and saw that unlike controls which switched from this local search to the global search or dispersal phase, post hour Hawaiians are locked in the local search phase and have high number of reversals and turns throughout. We then asked what are the neurons involved in regulating this local search behavior and limited food search of a lawn in post hour Hawaiian animals. We found there were no changes in sensory neurons like AWC which are involved in food search for C. elegans. However, three interneurons which are downstream of these food sensing neurons which regulate reversal probability in animals, AIB, RIM and AVA. These three neurons seem to have higher activity in post hour animals both in the context of searching for food off a bacterial lawn and when looking for food that when there is no food around. So these three neurons control the reversal output of the animals and restrict their search areas. We observed this long term plasticity in other wild isolates too other than the Hawaiian strain but not in the N2 of the domesticated strain. So we wondered if this is an effect of domestication associated genetic changes in the N2 strain. So we looked at uh, one candidate protein called globin 5 which is involved in sensing ambient oxygen. So the N2 strain has a non-functional version of globin 5 whereas the wild isolates have a functional protein. We saw that this particular protein globin 5 is involved in this long term plasticity and we saw that by expressing the ancestral or the wild form of globin 5 in an N2 background we could rescue this long term plasticity in the N2 strain. Our study showed that environmentally stressful conditions in early life can affect adult behavior and we explored this in foraging behavior in C. elegans.